It's Tuesday, and that means that we are breaking down a sensational Monday night football game, hitting the news, and then we are into the waivers. Probably some of the biggest pickups of the season, some potentially roster-changing players are available. Make sure you subscribe to this channel, like the video, and enjoy. The Fantasy Footballer Studio is brought to you by Samsung Galaxy. Visit Samsung.com to learn more. Hey, Foot Clan. Before we start today's show, I wanted to remind you about My Football Family. It's a children's book that I wrote over this past year, and you can share it with your kids or friends that have kids. Look, it's a good gift and a good way to introduce kids to all of the good parts of fantasy football, football and fandom, all of the things we love about sports. We've just added copies of it up on the website at shopballers.com, and you can get it on Amazon, Barnes & Noble, or any local bookstore. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Oh, welcome in. The Fantasy Footballers Podcast back with you. Jason Moore, Mike Wright, I'm Andy Holloway. Chilo. It's a Tuesday greeting from the Hitman. Uh, I'm feeling delightful. It was a fantastic Monday Night Football game, and I did not have to sweat with the rest of America. So it was, I just got to absorb. All of the great plays from every single player, both sides. While I know that many of you were, uh, you know, just the the prayers were flowing last night for both sides, for for both sides of just absolute redemption, panic. It was a great football game. Plenty of games last night. Yes, you, you thought the game was out of reach. You thought you had because won. It was. Or you thought you had lost, and then monstrous performances by a handful of individuals last night changes uh, i mean just insane people go into bed thinking they lost by 50 60 nope yeah i mean travis kelsey four touchdowns Devontae adams had two of them now he might now he might be suspended we'll see yeah he got uh the rage monster kind of took over there for adams yeah he uh truck sticked a photographer who has now filed a police report. And I don't blame them. And so we'll see what happens there. Glad he came out and quickly apologized, but, you know, you can't do that. Yeah, it's it's so, uh, it's on film there. Yeah, yeah, I mean, <laughs> submitting video evidence. <laughs> so he'll have to write a check uh, for sure. And uh, you, Josh Jacobs, I mean, Brooks, you, you, were, you were out of town for a while. We gave you, gave you some dap on the Josh Jacobs adoration. Uh, Brooks said... No fifth year option. I don't care. Playing I don't in, care. Playing in the Hall of Fame game. Not, I don't care. Not a big deal. Not a big deal. He's a great player. Yes, he is. And uh, we do have uh, not good enough for the fifth year option to be picked up. But yeah, I mean, it's he's a running back, so it's tough. I mean, I, it yeah. really is tough. And and I, you know, they could always bring him back. And I, the nice thing about the running back market is I don't know that you can play yourself into anything extravagant these days yeah that will be interesting i don't know the numbers of what would the fifth year option be compared to yeah it was a fifth okay i just making fifth sure i'm not the only option. one that heard that but go on uh, the, the native tongue came out yeah. a little bit there no they uh, did give him his fifth year option they just didn't give him his fifth year <laughs> but what is the cost of the fifth year option compared to what he is trending to making from the team right now uh well it's a lot more because <laughs> they would more still have to sign a new right. contract next year it's just a matter of, you know, uh, what what they're uh, paying him this year, basically. This was a career high in rushing, I believe. 21 for 154 and 1. Devontae Adams was 3 for 124. Af after hitting it last week. Yes. So I believe he's broken his own well, personal he's, record twice. Just watch. Use your eyes. He looks I mean, he, good. He's running hard on every yep. play, making good decisions. On the other side, Jarek McKinnon was the lead runner, 8 for 53. Uh, Clyde was, was not good between the tackles. 9 for 15, 1.7 a carry. And then three for 20 through the air, almost got into the end zone on a reception, but didn't. 
And here you are. I mean, without the touchdown, you're at 12 total opportunities for 35 yards, and you did not get what you needed if you started Clyde and you were hoping for a comeback Correct. victory. Yeah, this is the Clyde Edwards Elaire we know and love from uh his the the from the rest of his career. It's really a matter of whether you get those touchdowns and Travis Kelsey said, "No, they are mine." So the uh the Raiders have lost four one-score games now and sit one and four. The Chiefs, the comeback victory. We do have the Deucer Cam oh, available man. to us, so let's let's do it. Let's hit the button because I want to. Oh, there they are. So we've got Kyle Borgogan, Judge Giamatti, Al Borland, and um, Kyle. Are your Red Sox going to take care of business tonight? I'm so mad at you for saying that. So mad. Braves are going to win today. Okay. All right. Are they so. playing each other? Is that possible? No, they're not. No, the okay, Braves they're, they're are the Braves are playing the, right? the Phillies. They're d total different leagues, but yeah, the I just was asked to troll you. Are the Red Sox? In the, are the playoffs happening? They're start. Yeah, they have started. The are wild the card Sox games in? are done. No. Oh, the game starts in an hour. People, what are you we got to finish this episode. Oh, what right. are you talking about? It is only wait. The game starts in an hour. It's only week six. The hold playoffs on. are not here, guys. Hold on, hold on, Jason. There's a. The baseball playoffs, like the biggest stage for that sport, they're playing a game at what will be, what, 10 in the morning for us? One Eastern, yeah. Yeah, that good work over there, baseball. <laughs> what a dumb sport. <laughs> Sorry. You want to watch this? You better take off work. That part, that part is, I mean, it's fair. But you, when you have that many games, Mike, I mean, you can't. <laughs> but you it's the fit them playoffs. In. playoffs. Yeah. It's not just All like right. one of 182 or whatever they have. It's like. It's a playoff game. That's insane. Okay. All right. Any other thoughts on the Monday Night Football game before we get into the news? Uh, yeah. Darren Waller was. Oh. oh yeah. Yeah. Darren Waller unfortunately tweaked his hamstring super early in the game and was ruled out. So if you needed something from Waller, you Man. did not get it. At least the tight end position is super deep and predictable. <laughs> his season has been a disaster. Yeah, because I've seen the victory laps about Kelsey, which are fair, right? Like. You should have just taken him in the first round again. Uh, Mark Andrews has had a great. If you if you drew the wrong, you know, you drew the Waller straw there. That was costly. Yeah. So unfortunate, and now you're going to be scrambling to the waiver wire, which I mean, luckily that's what today's show is all about. Really, any tight end, you have Kel other than Kelsey and Andrews, any other high draft pick tight end has been terrible. The only, I mean, other than the Hawkinson one game. Sure. No, and I, I don't – he has been terrible. He helped you for <laughs> one game and was decent in another and destroyed you in, in the rest. The only other uh, draft pick I think was a quality pick for where you got him, kind of the middle rounds, has been Dallas Goddard. Dallas Goddard oh, yeah, yeah, has sure. performed well, and he didn't cost, you know, the fourth, fifth round pick. Yeah, Kittle hasn't gotten going yet. Dalton Schultz has been a disaster. Uh, we all remember Cole Komet. Kyle Pitts. Yeah. Kyle Pitts, yeah. Yeah, that's bad. Uh, let's talk news. News and notes from around the league. Presented by USAA Insurance. I guess we didn't talk about, and it kind of fits into the news, but we didn't talk about the ridiculous call on the oh, Chris the, Jones fumble. The the uh, roughing the passer? Here, here's the the thing that I didn't hear anybody say, and maybe this is inaccurate, but on that play, once the fumble took place, to me, that's Scrumville. Like, that shouldn't even – there shouldn't be anything after the fumble began that is even considered part of a sack. Yeah, like, the head referee actually addressed that after the game because they were oh, asked did? specifically okay, about, about that. And he said that when the quarterback is in the act of passing – until he can protect himself by rule, and that is how it's described in the rule book, until he can reestablish protection of himself, the rules apply to the quarterback. Still wrong, still incorrectly called because he braced himself with his yeah. arm. Like, it was an incorrect call, and unfortunately you couldn't review it. But I was really proud. Which they do in college. Right. I was, I was very proud of the Kansas City Chiefs fans <laughs> there because they let them have it and they didn't stop. They went to halftime. Came back, and the crowd let them have it. They were holding the grudge, and I loved to see it. It was a, it was a potential game-changing 
very incorrect call. Like, you're, he he did. He he tried to catch himself not to fall onto the quarterback, but he couldn't use both hands because he was busy taking the football away. I'm sorry that he decided to go after the ball instead of prioritizing not completely smooshing the quarterback. Well, and, and it, you're a victim of your size in that situation, yes. right? If that's Buda Baker and he's sacking the quarterback, he can't land on him hard enough. You Old know, like car. Uh, the NFL came out and said they're going to invest. They're going to look into this. You know, we got to get to the point where we accept that football is inherently a physical sport. Players have to be able to do something <laughs> to tackle the quarterback, and players are going to get hurt. Has anybody ever been willing to say players are going to get hurt uh, in the last ten years? And we just have to accept it. You know, there's not a penalty every time somebody. We've seen this in the secondary, right? Where there is a big hit that is a legal hit with the shoulder or something, and then it's a penalty because the inherent reaction to the player being down right. on the field is, oh, no, they're hurt. Something must be a penalty. It's football. Yep. Uh, it's it's a tough game. Mike McDaniel said, Tua Tungavailoa, not yet cleared for football activity, unlikely to play in week six. Okay. I think we'll have Teddy back, though. Damian Harris, the hamstring, likely oh, to miss man. multiple games. New England and Ramondre Stevenson get Cleveland, Chicago, New York, Indianapolis before the bye. <laughs> I don't think you'll see Damian Harris in those games. Yeah, it, it would be it'll be at least two weeks before he's back. But with the bye week coming up in a month, you might end up holding him out. In the meantime, holy moly, Ramondre Stevenson is going to be good. And in the short term, I am devastated. Why, oh, why is that? Which side of the equation? I, I don't know if you guys know this. I don't have a running back to start this week now. Oh, Derrick Henry's on by. Man. Damian Harris I just lost. So that's – I'm in a, I'm in oh, a so real pickle. Oh, really? Yeah. 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 Who do you – who do you, uh, you play anybody from this office? You play yeah, you Al playing? or – I don't know who I play this week. Oh, uh, let's uh, let's talk after the show maybe. Oh, yes, boy. Let's. Oh, boy. <laughs> uh, the... From my bountiful riches. <laughs> You have a bunch of guys that uh, are hard to get excited for. They are running backs, but they're starters. But yeah, I mean, fantasy football. I mean, it's like AJ Dillon, right, and Zeke, and yeah, and it's just like, I mean, they could fill a hole for yeah. sure. Uh, they're much better than no running back. That is true. <laughs> yeah, the Commanders. Uh, Jahan Dotson uh, didn't play in Week Five. Didn't practice on Monday. His comments made me think he's going to be out a little while. Logan Thomas limited, uh, probably not a solution to your tight end woes. Yeah, the fact that they <clears throat> play on Thursday is very low odds that Jahan Dotson plays. Isaiah McKenzie in the concussion protocol, and uh, the Seahawks claim Tony Tony Brooks, James Jones Jr. off of the waiver wire from yeah. the Saints. So it's good to have him back in the fold. Yeah, <laughs> sure, but poor Rashad Penny. It's, is that literal? It, no, it's just it, man. I'm sorry. He's he's so good, and his body does not want to play football. Yeah, I mean, well, it, it, this is like you broke a bone too. It's mm -hmm. not you, you don't prep your body for not breaking a bone. Well, I mean, you you're supposed to milk up. Oh yeah, got milk. So I, I don't I don't know what campaign. Rashad Penny's milk stance is. Maybe kicking some trees. You know what I mean? Oh, like, uh, you got to toughen up the shins. You got to build up them bones. You think he's Do the going, bamboo scratch? He's mm -hmm. going almond milk? Is that the problem? He, I don't know. I mean, I would never accuse a man of not being on team milk. Yeah. Uh, do do any of the <laughs> deucers back there? Are you any alternate milk consumers? Are you I, all? I mean, I, there's, you all two, there's dairy problems out give, there. Give me your percent. If you're, what, are you two percenters? I'm a whole man. Oh, Whoa, God, are you hey. really? Well, someone doesn't have a weight problem. <laughs> I was just say, <laughs> you will not be a whole man in a few more years, Kyle. Uh, what about you, Brooksy? Two percenter. Yeah, that's where. Almond milk. Yeah, see? Mm -hmm. Well, yeah, your fibulas or your tibias. Something yeah. Yeah. Stay Watch safe. out Stay on, safe. on the pickleball courts. Uh, that was today's news and notes brought to you by USAA Insurance. <laughs> Learn more at USAA.com slash insurance. Welcome to The Fold, presented by Samsung Galaxy. Jason, your your stay safe really tickled me. Thank you. Uh, I care for my friends, and I didn't know he was an almond milk guy. 
Yeah, I mean... Have you tried the cashew milk? Oh, gross. I have not. I don't really even like almond milk, but that's just what's in my fridge because my family likes it. Mm. Yeah. I've, I, I prefer the cashew over the almonds. I prefer cashews over almonds. <laughs> that's for sure. Well, yeah, it, it, it seems Makes a better milk, milk huh? Yeah. All yeah. right. <laughs> do we have bye weeks now? We unfortunately do. The Detroit Lions, Houston Texans, Las Vegas Raiders, and unfortunately the Tennessee Titans are on bye. Well, you, you know, you have a dominating one game lead in the division. You should be fine, Jason. <laughs> All right. So we do have bye weeks to add to the mix with injuries as we welcome some players to the fold. It's waiver wire time. And let's begin. We saw Jacoby Myers come back from injury to eight targets, seven for one, 11 and one. Is he at the top of your list if he's available? Because he is. You know, rostered in a majority of leagues. Sure, he is available in some, and yes, he is my he's my number one wide receiver acquisition of the week. Thirty eight percent of the targets this past week. Thirty eight when we saw him in week two. Twenty percent. I mean, Jacoby Myers has always been a a PPR guy, but if you're going to be pulling in that type of a target share, those are absolutely incredible numbers. The the upcoming schedule that we laid out for Stevenson. It's the same for Jacoby Myers. That's it's pretty soft. And like, where do the running back targets go? Right, where it, do they just filter to Jacoby Myers even more? I, I think that that is a possibility for him. So he just he feels like an incredibly safe. the The ceiling isn't outrageous for Jacoby Myers. It it really never has been. But for a for a low end wide receiver two or a high end wide receiver three. To be sitting there for you to pick up, I would, I would go after him at the wide receiver position. Yeah, a couple weeks ago before the injury, I said he was basically a poor man's Deontay Johnson, and if you, he if, might be the rich man. And that's now. what, I, <laughs> well, that was where I'm going. It's like he might just be Deontay Johnson. If, if Deontay Johnson was on waivers, what would you spend on Deontay Johnson? You spend up because he's such a talented wide receiver. He has a history of being great, great for PPR. But now this current season that we're playing fantasy football in with the quarterback situation. Uh, for Deontay Johnson with, uh, you know, uh, the arrival of Pickens kind of sure. siphoning some of that off. It's a very, very similar comp, a PPR guy that can really have a big performance if he gets a touchdown. And so I would I would I would go pretty hard of, at Jacoby Myers if he was on waivers, sure. obviously mostly rostered in, uh, you know, in, in most deep leagues. We also do have kind of a cool. Big announcement, something that uh, for our waivers that we are unleashing on the website today. It is live right now. We have a waiver wire page now. We've never had that. We've always written like a, you know a, a recap of this episode, and we've put that out there. But there hasn't been a place where you could go Monday night. You could go Tuesday. You could go and and look at a list of our players, see how much fab we would spend, see how each one of us individually prioritizes each player within the position and and overall which position we would go after you know uh if you've got a roster spot to burn we have that now up on the website so you can go to the rankings just go to the fantasyfootballers.com and uh, it's under the rankings waiver wire rankings you could go there every week forever nice yeah i recommend it i i love it i was putting in waiver claims and it's really nice when you could just have like i we know this. We're talking about this. But it's nice when you have the list of people that you can just, at a glance, one screen, the other screen. Right. Let's talk about the Steelers, though, for a second, because your co your comments, you brought up Deontay Johnson. George Pickens last week was 6 for 83. <clears throat> Pickens is exciting to me because you get big plays. You can get really big plays with George Pickens. I know you'll disagree with me on this next comment, but – since you brought him up, I believe and am actively targeting Deontay Johnson in leagues. I think Deontay Johnson is a perfect buy low candidate. Um, you look at we're talking about George Pickens because he had a six for eighty three game with eight targets. Deontay Johnson had his his mo the most targets of the season thirteen with, with uh, Kenny Pickett this past week. Problem is he caught five of thirteen. But when I see the target share maintaining with the transition at quarterback. And the history, you brought it up, right? That's the difference between Jacoby Myers and Deontay is you have multi-years of, of production. I do believe he's a target, so I will be pursuing him. I don't I don't disagree with that. I think Deontay Johnson is a, is a fine 
undervalued target right now. But, I mean, if Jacoby Myers is on a team and he's not on the waivers, I think you could poke for him as well because they just – nobody really wants – Nobody values the guys that aren't touchdown scorers as well as they should, especially if you're in a PPR league. Uh, pick in 71% rostered, though. So let's get into some names that are yeah. a much lower rostered. Interesting names. Jason, I'm, are you reacting to Alec Pierce here? I am. There is another rookie uh, across from George Pickens who I think is the better pickup than Pickens. I mean, you, you, you can <laughs> – better pick? That's a lot of picks. Uh, if, yeah. Uh, pick the players, not your nose. Picking up the pickings. Pick the players, not your nose. Alec Pierce was the target leader last week for the Indianapolis Colts. Over 21% uh, target share. Has looked great. Was an early round draft pick. You know, uh, everyone loves uh, George Pickens. I love George Pickens. He's super talented. I thought he should be a first rounder. He drops into the second round. You know who else was a second round pick? Alec Pierce. And and because we weren't expecting him to be a first rounder, who we feel dropped, we don't give him the respect. But he's looked great. Matt Ryan loves him. Matt he was Ryan also is, the target tied for the target leader of the week before. Yeah, so it's not I, just one week. He is absolutely involved and very very talented. Um, so I, you know, he's a he's a must pick up. Now, the, how much you spend on Fab, that's going to depend on your depth, right? But yeah, but I think you need to take the shot on him because I think this offense is going to figure some things out. I mean, they they have looked so terrible, right? Mm -hmm. But one of those games was no Jonathan Taylor. One of the other games was no Michael Pittman. Mm -hmm. And I think that might have been Alec Pierce's first game. So you you have, you know, two weeks that are – and he's, in, you know, coming into this Frank Reich system. We've all trusted Frank Reich over the years. I do think it will get a little bit better. You know, Brady had a really soft, bad start to the year. Uh, got some pieces back. You know, Pittman, Pierce, and Taylor with the three gigantic tight ends – it could get a little bit better for it, them. I, it can get a lot better because you, the uh, the uptick of Alec Pierce this last Thursday night, I think that there you can say there was some correlation with Ashton Doolin getting banged up in that game. Uh, and then, so if, if Doolin is still dealing with his foot injury and then the, the other competition for routes is Paris Campbell, who's just running around out there. He's just, I mean, he's probably having a, a good time just getting some exercise in. But that's the competition, so I, I do think that Pierce is a is a priority add this week if you really if you need wide receivers because as the year goes, I mean I expect that it will be Michael Pittman and Alec Pierce before uh, sooner rather than he later. He played his first game as a rookie, didn't do much. Then he got a concussion. That's part of you know why he might not have done much. But then he comes back week three. Since week three, the last three games, he is averaging five for seventy four. That that would be eighty five for twelve hundred and fifty eight yards. Yeah, that's that's the life. Obviously, very small sample, three games to extrapolate out, but it just shows the talent is there. And and the reason I like him more than Pickens isn't really because I think he's better than Pickens; it's because he's cheaper. People are going to go hard after George Pickens, right. harder than they will after Alec Pierce. Yeah, Pierce, I think, is the priority add under fifty percent roster percentage, and I would drop Elijah Moore, Allen Robinson, Juju Smith Schuster, all of those guys Agreed. for the upside of Alec Pierce. Jason and I made an off-season Allen Robinson Juju trade. Uh, I told him before the show we traded the wind for the wind. I mean, it's just Juju yep. turned what? She liked the wind. Ju Juju turned thirty-four this year. Um, <laughs> And, I mean, that's what it feels oh. like. like Juju is, uh, the reason I wanted to make the trade is because if they both did good or they both did bad, well, at least Juju is younger. Ju I mean, He's how? aging at a rate that's like there's a scientific like movie to be what made. Was the, what was the uh, uh, the movie where they were on the beach? Oh, yeah. yeah the oh. M. Night, Shyamalan. M. Night Shyamalan movie. We just saw this. No, that's did exactly. Did Juju vacation there? The, over Juju the went season? over there, and now it's it's like five years for every one year or one hour or something <laughs> like that. Uh, beyond Alec Pierce, let's talk uh, about. Well, he's twenty five for what is he was twenty five. Yeah, he yesterday is, he is no longer. Uh, he went from nineteen to twenty five to thirty four in three years. But outside of Alec Pierce, I think there are some, you know, a lot of the names that will be at the top of waiver list today. I think have a little bit of a trap floor, where Khalil Shakir scored right, uh, Diami Brown scored. Randall Cobb got a bunch of targets. I don't, me personally, now I want your takes, I don't look at those players as sustainable options 
to pivot to. I look at one of them as a good pickup. Uh, Diami Brown is a temporary thing. He had a perfect matchup, and Jahan Dotson was gone. Now, Jahan Dotson will probably be gone this Thursday. If you want to take another shot at a deep bomb touchdown, sure. But I don't. Diami Brown is not going to be a thing going forward. There's too many targets in this offense. He is. Uh, he he's not really worth a pickup for me. I, because if I'm not going to play him this week, and I'm not then I'm not going to need him on my roster. I'm not picking him up at all. Same with Randall Cobb. I'm not going to be chasing the game that will come every four or five games where he leads in targets and doesn't do enough with them. But Khalil Shakir, I am interested in. And the reason I'm interested in is because Jamison Crowder was really, really involved. We don't know. When, when Isaiah McKenzie comes back from his concussion, which we hope is this week, Isaiah McKenzie could be awesome he could take over the role we hoped he would have at you know 100% snap share and just do that but what Khalil Shakir did as a rookie showing out looked just so explosive whenever he had the ball in his hands if he ends up playing that Jameson Crowder role and he's 50% of you know the 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 back and forth slot role for Josh Allen he's he's a player I want on my roster for potential growth as a rookie yeah, that also missing Dawson Knox and McKenzie in that game, but he is uh, he is an explosive player in one play from Josh Allen. We know just how good he is. Mike, do you have any thoughts on Khalil? No, I, I agree that he's worth a stash for what Jason highlighted, and then I would bring up uh, Rondale Moore of the Arizona Cardinals. It's it is a weird path that we have been on with him, uh, it, but trying to you know lay out everything that has happened for him this year, which was he started incredibly injured, had to fight his way back, rehab. Uh, well, it was a it was a hamstring, if I'm not mistaken. That's correct. And then week four, when you're finally active, it's like, okay, let's see what Rondale Moore can do. Well, A.J. Green didn't play. And Rondale Moore went to play the A.J. Green role, where he got five targets, but he caught three for 11. Like, it was very unsuccessful. A.J. Green comes back. Rondale Moore goes back into the slot where he can actually play seven catches for 68 yards. So I think that that he is a slot wide receiver. The, the week four really low output is not what he could be moving forward. Like all those Dorch targets that we saw through the first few weeks, those are the targets that Rondale Moore should receive now with the, the big caveat. DeAndre Hopkins is coming back. But with with uh, with Hopkins and Hollywood Brown, Rondell Moore should continue to be in the slot. So maybe hit the ceiling, probably comes way down once Hopkins is back. But I think that he is still worth an add, especially if you need a guy to play this week against Seattle. I think that Rondell Moore is in play. Yeah, without Hopkins against Seattle, Rondell Moore, you could plug him in and start him. I have a hard time recommending to pick him up just because you know we're, we're we are Cardinals fans. We watch it with a little bit uh, different outlook in these games a little um begrudging skepticism skepticism in our soul and the amount of behind the line of scrimmage targets that Rondell Moore receives and he's just not set up for success but in a PPR league you know they're going to manufacture some touches for him I, I think the the other guy guys uh, that we need to talk about before we move on from wide receivers is the New York Giants situation sure because they have no wide receivers they have nobody that can get the job done and they have a couple of people behind the scenes. First of all, if you need someone now, Darius Slayton seemed like he was fine. Seven targets, six for 79, and he's got a history of doing it with Daniel Jones, and it looks like his opportunity is there because of all the injuries. And Baltimore's next. The The wide receiver I would pick up is definitely Wandale. I have been on Mr. Kadarius Tony's side for a while, but he came back to practice and re-aggravated his injury again. I mean... That's uh, actually not true. Yeah, I know it's a new one. You didn't know that it's his other hamstring? Are you kidding? I mean, no. does it matter then? But, I mean, he hurt his other one. He's got a double hammy. Yeah, I, I'm just out. I'm out for a while. I don't want to keep him for another He's out another for a while, too. Yeah, but Wandale, uh, he, he was practicing limited uh, throughout the week last week, Was uh, did not participate on Friday, but they had um, travel uh, going on for their game, so... I think Wandale Robinson is a little bit away from coming into a situation where he will see a ton of targets. Yeah, he's. A, I agree. He was a stash. If you're, if you're good and you're like, I'm not picking up Rondale to play him this week. I'm not picking up Devin Duvernay uh, to play him this week. Should Rashad Bateman go out? Then I think Wandale is a is a good long term stash. Rondale and Wandale. Yes. Okay. Man, just looking at this, 
George Pickens, Alec Pierce, Khalil Shakir, Wandale Robinson. They're all rookies. Yeah. Those are the ones I want at this point in the season. All right, quick break. Back with running backs. All right, let's dive into what running backs we are welcoming into the fold. The big pickup. Here it is. Mm -hmm. The the moment you've been waiting for. Pickup of the year so far. Kenneth Walker, the third. Eight for eighty eight and a touchdown, but Rashad Penny is done for the year. Uh now Kenneth Walker rostered in fifty eight percent of leagues according to the numbers I have. I know in CBS he was at sixty eight percent. Um, so he is not going to be available for everybody. He's not available in any of the leagues I'm in. Um, but if he is, this is a break the bank yep. situation. It's yeah. This is everything. how much fab you have left. That's probably what you need to spend. I mean, if you're being smart, go look at your league's fab list and, course, and take course. a look and see who you think is going to go after him. If, if you end up having the most and don't overbid what people can bid but yeah you're going to break the bank for ken walker if he is there seattle is a far better offense than we thought coming into this season ken walker's production profile athleticism draft capital is exactly what you want for a rookie running back he's going to help win people some championships this year it might just be the people that are, were already holding him but if he's on waivers break the bank Raheem Mostert also mostly rostered, but uh, a priority pickup with the opportunity. He had 113 and a touchdown, almost scored another one, and is playing every snap at running back, full-time Miami running back. It's near impossible to find a full-time workhorse running back on waivers, let alone one that is looking as good as him. So uh, to me, he's another break-the-bank situation, but not available in most leagues. So beyond the two maybe available break-the-bank situations, Eno Benjamin – could get the start for Arizona at running back. Now, I don't think this is going to be a long-term opportunity for Eno Benjamin, but we play to win the week, right? We want yes. to get another another W in your fantasy league, and Eno Benjamin looks like a, a really juicy start against Seattle. Yeah, James Conner got banged up. Daryl Williams got banged up. And so far what they're saying is they're going to be extra careful with the James Conner injury. So, I mean, very early in the week, but at least trending like he could miss this week. And Eno, Eno would be plug and play. I believe Jonathan Ward got injured as well. Did he? he? Did. Oh, he so, did. I mean, this is this is a situation where if James Conner they, plays... Arizona tried to claim uh, Tony Tony. Oh, make, yeah, they, so these injuries are, are going to... You know, Eno can get involved in the passing game. They play Seattle in Seattle. It's a 51 point over under. Uh, they're going to need to try to run the football, and and they're going to succeed in doing so. So Eno if, is a like, what would you invest? Like your situation, right? My situation. Is Eno out there in our league of record? I do not know if he is, but let's pretend he is. Okay. If he's out there, then I'm going to spend at least fifteen fab to get him. That's like the baseline. I don't think you'll get him for that. I don't, I don't either. either. Um, people, you, there's always a handful of people that need a start every week so you, you'll have to go higher if you are in need of it but it is a temporary thing this isn't a stash play to me this isn't um, I've got good running backs Eno's out there let me go hard get him for 25 fab this that's, is if that's you, not that for you not if my running backs are good because I don't think Eno is a long-term play short term this week I would play him Pretty much, even if James Conner is active, if James James Conner's not active, he's a phenomenal play. But I I think if your running back situation is good, where he would be your fourth running back on the bench, I'm not going to break the bank for him. Would you prioritize Eno Benjamin or Mike Boone, running back for the Denver Broncos? Mike Boone had seven carries for 38 yards, three receptions for 47 yards. Mike I Boone's situation seems like it could be more long term because Javante's injury was full season however we haven't seen Latavius Murray involved right. in his involvement yet the oh it's Eno for me by a lot yeah so that's okay. I lean the same side I think Eno has a chance to win the job or like a big chunk of the job hmm. I, I James think Conner's he could not been great I no think he has and a, Eno Eno's been worked in James Conner was actually quite good last week obviously got injured so it wasn't wasn't good on the end but he was running pretty pretty great I didn't get that I didn't get that from the game Really? What was no. his? Uh, what was his line? Uh, let I me think pull James Conner. James Conner to me has just looked like a. James Conner was nine for fifty. Okay. Fifty-five. <laughs> Fifty-five. Six point one a carry. Right. So, I mean, he yeah. was, he looked good. What to was me. his long? 
Do we have that? 17. Yeah, 17. Okay. Yeah. Uh, we'll see when he comes back. Isaiah Pacheco got <laughs> kind of. I don't, I don't know. I, I, I don't. I, it just doesn't even feel like anything you could. Yeah, I don't know. Is that Pacheco? Maybe uh, Pacheco? Yeah, Pacheco maybe. is the... Um, McKinnon? Uh, uh, I don't know. Jarek? Uh, uh, maybe. Um, no, it's just... This is like you're... What um, about Pacheco? It's like you're crossing a bridge, but like if you stand on the on the bridge, it disappears. <laughs> it's like if you try to stand like, on like, it... Is this like a Last Crusade situation? Yeah, but... Leap from the lion's mouth? Yeah, but you, well, well, you have to have faith, right? That's yes. why they... He, I don't Hard have the have faith. faith. Yeah, you might fall Do you here. just go through it? <laughs> yeah. I think you go straight through it and down. <laughs> like if you... you you, you need to roster these guys. Jerick McKinnon, Isaiah Pacheco, they they should be rostered. They're part of the Kansas City Chiefs offense, and you can... Uh, You're not allowed to start them, though. <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, it, right now, it's it's kind of... You think of it like you start Clyde edwards alaire and you don't start the other guys, and you're just waiting for some clarity via injury to any one of the three of them to where it's a, a two-headed backfield because there usually is an okay secondary start. You just don't know who it is. Here's the player I think will be the sneaky start of the week. The Seattle Seahawks do not have Rashad Penny. They do not have Travis Homer. DJ Dallas yep. is available in every league that exists, and we can all look and wonder and marvel at Pete Carroll when he gives 50% of the snaps to DJ Dallas, and we're all saying, what in the world's going on? Why isn't it Ken Walker? Well, Ken Walker's a rookie. There's going to be missed assignments. There's going to be a balance to this offense. There was always a balance with Chris Carson, and we'd get frustrated. So... I'm not saying you spend up on DJ Dallas because you don't have to. But if you throw him on the back of your bench and then you find out this is a 50-50 timeshare on an offense that's scoring a ton of points with Geno Smith, I just think it could be interesting. Yes, I I think he is worth uh, just a cursory ad. Yeah. Uh, otherwise, you know, it's thin there's, at running back. Yeah, there's a couple names. I say it every time. Rashad White, make sure he's rostered. Um, Pierre Strong is another name that we need to bring up. Uh, from this the Patriots. Is, yes, uh, Patriots rookie running back. Now that uh, Damian Harris went down to injury, this is going to be the Ramondre Stevenson show. I don't, I don't look at Pierre Strong as someone that's going to come in and touch the ball twelve to fifteen times and kind of take that one B role. But he is the next guy up. Damian Harris is out for a week for for a while, so he, he's just someone that should be rostered. Agreed. And then uh, also super cheap, Damian Williams of the Falcons. We, we don't know if for sure if he's coming back this week, but we're talking through a lot of just stash and hope running backs with some upside. So he Damian Williams is in that list as well. Which I'm not dropping Chase Edmonds, Cam Akers, Daryl Henderson no. for the stash and hopes. I, no. I agree with that. Other than, yeah, other than like a, a Rashad White stash and hope, I think whose upside is stash and cash. Yes. Um, yeah, I, I, I would agree with you, Andy. I'm not dropping. You would rather have Rashad White than Cam Akers? I would rather have Rashad White. Oh man, that one's tough. But yeah, I feel like I would because Cam Akers is—he's got the opportunity. He's done nothing with it. I don't see how he does anything with it. If there's—if this is a player that I have to be starting, no, I—I I think even then, I—I—I I, I, Rashad White has been more and more involved, getting more drives. I—I I would rather have Rashad White than Cam Akers. Like if, yeah. if Daryl Henderson misses time, are you actually? Does your confidence just skyrocket on Cam Akers? Does the meet? It feels like that would be. I mean, I would start him over Rashad White in that situation, yeah, but, but it, I don't think he turns into a league-winning running back. And it, where it is right now, you can't start Cam I, Akers. I would certainly keep him over Rashad White because I'm not gonna. I mean, I if I need guaranteed touches, I know it hasn't been good. Well, that's why I said if if this is a player, I have to play. Well, man, <laughs> I think you said if he's the player, yeah, you have to I, play, I did the play exact Rashad same thing White. Twice. I mean. You know, two weeks ago, uh, he, so the last two weeks for Rashad White, now that he's been involved, because he was at like sub 10%, then it's 38%, 38%, 9%, opportunities, nine opportunities, a touchdown two weeks ago. He's getting more involved, and I just feel like if he gets more involved, you can do something. I'm uh, So that's that's for you to decide at home. Uh, the last name I'll throw out there, if you are the Austin Eckler manager, it does seem like Joshua Kelly has cemented himself a as the two for this team they've they've experimented they've done what a lot of teams have done which is they've played sony michelle and then gone 
Okay, we're done with this. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Nobody else a running back to mention? Uh, looking through the list. Wait, did we bring up Tevin Coleman? I, I, I mean, mean, yeah, I, I guess maybe as the backup for San Francisco. Ty Davis Price had a lot of involvement a couple weeks ago before his injury. Um, you know, obviously, I don't expect multiple touchdowns for Tevin Coleman going forward, but at the very least, he's sure probably double digit opportunities. Yeah, his work could go. I think up. we all felt a little bit burnt by that line of thinking not resulting in any opportunities for Jordan Mason for two weeks. Obviously, the team didn't have confidence in Mason, so they went out and got Tevin Coleman, gave him opportunities. So, yeah, I mean, I think I think it's worth a look. And, and yeah. Jeff Wilson is not durable historically. So, at the tight end position, let's dive in. Who are we welcoming to the fold? Mike, why don't you lead us, lead us <laughs> off here? So, there's a few tight ends yeah. that you could go with. Right. What are their names? Uh... Like what would be like the name? It's Taysom Hill. Oh. And uh Wait, I, the tight end three on the season? No, he's not. He is. Oh my gosh. Okay, yeah. If you want to pick up Taysom Hill and play him, go ahead. It's probably <laughs> it's probably like it's over I mean, over these guys like Hayden Hurst, Kate Otten, and Evan Ingram are kind of the guys we want to highlight this week. Shooting for ceiling would be Taysom Hill. Yeah. Tyler Conklin um, is a guy that, you know, Conk, we've, Conk, Conk Goose. Conk Goose uh, it, you know, you felt like it was a safe option. It gets enough targets, run, it ran the most routes in the entire NFL. Gooses. Every, you know, tight ends can goose. There's no better odds at a touchdown than Taysom Hill right now. Exactly. So you're you're wanting to say, I'm okay getting the, the week two 1.4 fantasy points from Taysom, Taysom Hill. Because week one was 14 fantasy points. This last week was 34. He can do stuff that other tight ends cannot. Like throw the ball. Do, right. Throw a touchdown. Um, even his other bad game was like 8.1 fantasy points two weeks ago. That's, I mean, Conklin's, yeah, that, Conklin's dreaming of that. Yeah, Dalton Schultz has never seen that. I, it, it is unfortunately the case with Taysom Hill right now. He is by far the biggest pick of a tight end. But the other names, there are good names this week. Hayden Hurst is a good name. Um, T. Hayden Higgins is, is an okay name. Well, yeah. but with T. Higgins' yeah. injury right now, we you think he's going to miss? I, I, you, I mean, you have to prepare for it at least right now. Okay. He's certainly not at a hundred percent health. Like, and would you when, pick up Otten, who had six for forty-three for Tampa Bay? So this is a situation where you're going to have to make a decision now. But both of these are based upon injuries situations. So like Cameron Bright, whether he clears. He's in the concussion protocol, that is right? Correct, yeah. So uh, we we don't know if he's going to clear it or not. Right now, I'm erring on the side of people not clearing concussion protocols in the wake of uh, the Tua situation. Cade was seven targets, six for forty three, uh, had multiple red zone targets, and he's playing for Tom Brady. So I don't mind that at all. But Hayden Hurst has gotten it done before. Is the better player at this point in their careers? Cade Otten is a rookie tight end. We know how. Uh, poorly that usually goes. So I would pick up Hayden Hurst uh, because the other game without T. Higgins, uh, I think in those two games, seven and a half targets, he can get in the end zone. So yeah, I, I would go I would go that I'd way. I'd prioritize Hurst over Otten as well. You have the uh, the Bray injury, and uh, Chris Godwin was used pretty sparingly in the second half. Like he, Godwin is just going to get more and more involved as he's healthier. And that would take the targets from all. And off Brooksy, of a, are people really asking about dropping Darren Waller? Is that a real thing? Yes, sir. Oh, I, people have to be furious. Yeah, yeah. but the, but you don't drop Darren Waller. Right. No, if you he don't. plays, you play him. And if he doesn't play, you put him on an IR or on your bench. Yeah, this is a situation where if you don't have an IR, you keep him on your bench and you have to roster two tight ends. If, if Darren Waller, unless you're in the league of record, if you're in the league of record, you can drop Darren Waller. We posted on socials like when the game was happening last night, so maybe so just some uh, frustrated. Well, yeah, it's, it, it sucks, but you you need to be investing into you know your fantasy playoffs as well. And Darren Waller could have a role in those. Sure. Defensive pickups for the week. There's actually quite a few matchups that seem like they'll get you by to maybe being even better than that. New England plays Cleveland. Cleveland plays New England. You're gonna be. <laughs> Uh, looking at both as options, you know, no Damian Harris could have zap, zap, zappy. And, um, you know, that game's in Cleveland. So I'm less intimidated. Um, you know, I think that the rookie Bailey zappy will have more of a challenge on the road against miles Garrett than he did at home against no pass rush. Yeah. I would also throw out the Los Angeles chargers 
Their defense has been kind of up and down, but they are playing the Denver Broncos, whose offense has been down and down. So, <laughs> Which, oh. yeah, that, that goes for Jacksonville taking on Indianapolis's offense. I don't know if I have the stones for that, to be honest with you. What if really? There's no, if there's no Taylor? You don't have the stones to play the Jacksonville Jaguars defense? I don't, I don't know if I have the stone. This just seems like the kind of game in Indianapolis. It's a get-right game. Jacksonville has been trending the wrong direction as a team, and Jonathan Taylor, I think, will be back. You've, we talked about Alec Pierce and Pittman. I think this that's a trap defensive start. I would, I, I see it a different way. I think Jacksonville Jaguars defense has been pretty fine. Josh Allen can get a bunch of sacks. The offensive line for Indy has been bad. Uh, Indy struggles against Jacksonville, so I, they're they're a team that I would be fine to fine to play this week, but could be a trap. Uh, the Denver Broncos play the Chargers. I don't know if I want to mess no, with I that. Do that. All right, that was Welcome to the Fold, presented by Samsung Galaxy with Galaxy Z Fold 4. Unfold an immersive screen and watch games in full detail and maximize your viewing experience on the go. Visit Samsung.com to learn more. Full stream ahead. All right, streaming quarterback options. I'm this is... This is uh, – I'll hand it off to you. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to kick it off because I've got the worst one of the three of us. But I, I just want to lay – I was doing sure. like a landscape work let's, let's, right now. Let's him uh, hedge those uh, bushes. Um, what I'm yes. saying is – That's what they say. There are players you're now deciding on that you drafted that you have to move on from. So, uh, you know, Russell Wilson and Matthew Stafford bye -bye. are two names that, you know, people have played them. It hasn't worked out. And they're looking for a new permanent solution. Well, you have a more permanent solution, and Mike might have a more permanent solution. This week, if you need someone off the waivers who is widely available, uh, I would go with Jimmy G against Atlanta. They're five-and-a-half point favorites. The Falcons have allowed the fourth most passing yards. Top ten quarterback weeks in four out of five games. Mm -hmm. The weapons look good. So, I, you know, it, Jimmy G is not someone that you – usually want to start in fantasy but in the right matchup he can certainly get the job done the conversation has changed around Aaron Rodgers in fantasy football over the past couple of years so I'm putting him here in the streamer category that could be a situation where he's been on your bench in leagues maybe hit the waiver wire but this is a good week for him taking on the Jets uh, they're seven point home favorites it's been a rocky road. It looked like it was getting off to a great start last week. 19 first half fantasy points turned into 23 total. But he's been good in the red zone, and they're figuring out some weapons. I do think those days are coming where Rodgers will contribute to your fantasy team, and I think this week is one of them. And here we are, ladies and gentlemen. It is Geno Smith mm -hmm. against the Arizona Cardinals. You live by the NBA Jam rules. If you don't, I mean, you really should. It's, yeah, it's just it's, a life tip. It's it's a good way to live your life. He is officially on fire. QB7, QB2, QB4. Meanwhile, Arizona allowing the eighth most fantasy points to the quarterback position. Geno looks sharp and he's got DK and Lockett. And well, let me let me let me just make this difficult. Okay. Do you drop Russell Wilson to play Geno Smith? I think I do. I do. So did the and Seahawks. I, <laughs> <laughs> yes. Well, they didn't just drop him. They got a ton for him. Yeah, that's I true. Mean, they got a bunch of picks. I've watched a lot of Geno over the last few days. Um, This team, I don't think the Seattle Seahawks knew what they had. I really don't. They traded. They, I think they thought Drew Locke was going to be their starter when this oh, offseason they, began. Uh, they certainly did. And then you have a situation where you tried to manage Geno for the first couple weeks. You realize how good he was playing, and then you said, "Well, let's let's let him play," and it's working out. And you watch these games; like there are certain quarterbacks where the ball comes off their hand in a special way. We say that all the time about Mahomes and Herbert and Josh Allen. Right now, it's happening with Geno Smith. And will the shoe drop? I probably, <laughs> but maybe not. I mean, may. This was a talented player coming into the league. Now he was not, the first quarterback drafted. Is that right? I, I think he was. Second, he's a second what, round pick. He, was, he waited forever. Yeah, it was a second round pick. I th you could have been right though, Jason. I'll uh, look that up. Maybe not first quarterback drafted that draft, but you did have a couple years in a row with like EJ Manuel and Geno Smith, where they they dropped and someone took them. 
I just think, you know, it's not a normal thing. What is he, 32 or something, like a career backup? He looks the part right now. I'm, I'm just it, – it's EJ, not a mirage. EJ Manuel went ahead of him. 20 so in the second, 20s, right? Yeah, yeah. second one. That was not a, uh, not a big quarterback draft. But Geno Smith looks great. And, yes, he does. You know, name loyalty can only hurt you sometimes. And uh, not putting Geno in would only be – not due to resume this year, but due to name loyalty to somebody else. You know, put this the streamer candidates together. Aaron Rodgers against the Jets or Geno against Arizona at home in a 51-point over-under. What do you want? Uh, probably Geno. I mean, I don't know. I think it's the right call. Yeah, I think that's the right it's play. It's scary. You got to put on your iron underpants. Yes, you do. <laughs> for that one. No, I mean, Give the, me Kirk Cousins against Miami. The shoot, the shoot did drop for... You know, Jared Goff on the road in New England after he was a top five scorer. So that can happen. And he's Geno. But uh, it's been impressive. Anybody else worth mentioning? Carson Wentz against Chicago is, a, is another yeah, name. I, I don't mind it. That's the Thursday night game. But you can, Ron always Rivera, put, you can always put your hand in the fire. Yeah. Ron Rivera not regretting the pickup of Carson Wentz is what oh, he said man. out loud. <laughs> sort of. After saying that it was quarterback yeah. being the problem between it's what, him and the yeah. other teams? It's what he had to say out loud after what he said out loud. Yeah, the the love that quote of asking Ron, like, what is what is the difference right now between you and the rest of the division? And he immediately goes, quarterback. Wait, 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 yeah. wait, wait, wait. <laughs> it, what, what is, it's just like the the Cowboys are playing Cooper Rush. <laughs> like, like, don't. Don't complain about your quarterback situation. The Giants are playing Daniel Jones. Yeah, that you handpicked. Yeah, yeah, that's fair. All right, on tomorrow's show, we have ride or die. We have a fantasy draft redo. This first is two rounds. Be fun. We, I've been looking forward to this. We've been talking in the office. Like, who would you take first? Who would you go? Like, basically, who's best from here on out, rest right. of the way? We're going to do that for a couple rounds. Also, Thursday night preview as well. It's going to be fun. We're going into week six. Going to have to fill in for some of those bye week players, Jason. You're going to have to figure things out. Yeah. I've, I'm got, sad. I've got some real stars. Raheem bye, Mostert deucers. available. Let's go, Deucer Cam. Oh, goodbye, yeah. everybody. We'll see everybody see tomorrow. tomorrow. Stay safe. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com. And follow us on Twitter at the FF Ballers.